Uh, welcome everyone to um, another one in our series of webinars that uh, are designed to bring some clarity and some understanding to changes within the Elite product, um, as well as some upcoming um, changes that we'll be going through. Uh, first off, I'd like to apologise for those that joined last time when we had a couple of technical issues and uh, we actually dropped out halfway through. Um, like most other people, we are, our development office is based in Melbourne, so we're working from home during the, the restrictions that we're currently facing. Um, so hopefully today is a bit of a smoother experience. Uh, today I'll have Digby, um, our QA analyst, running through the various topics that are some common causes for support calls, uh, which include clearing the validation errors from partnership distributions, how to create an STP final declaration, and creating an STP update report, and how to override the taxpayers' shares calculated in the rental schedule uh, in the individual return. Uh, we also have some members of the Elite support team joining us to field any questions that you might have and we'll respond back to you. Uh, the responses may occur via email after the webinar concludes. Uh, so to begin with, I'll, I'll hand over to, um, to Digby. Hi guys, uh, Digby here. Um, first of all, we're going to cover a quite a common issue that's occurring at the moment. Uh, the ATO have uh, made some changes this financial year. Um, we've made a lot of changes this year actually, um, which is causing quite a number of problems. Um, the first one we wanted to address at the moment is the uh, partnership distribution. So basically uh, the breakdown of the um, non-primary production distribution minus foreign income has changed from previous years. Um, it's now done on a per partnership basis rather than uh, the overall amounts. So um, distribution is now broken as always, it's broken down onto um, shared um, income related to financial investments, shared related to uh, rental properties and all other shared income. Um, but this is now done on a partnership basis rather than an overall basis. So if we look at the next screen, we've got, um, this is all covered within the grids itself and I'll walk you through this on the screen. Let me do that. So just get to the next screen. Oops, sorry, go switch to that. All right, so if you can see, we've got a 2020 return open at the moment. Um, it will have partnership and trust income at income item 13. So if we step into that return, uh, into that distribution, and we've got, normally it was distributed in here, but now it's done on an individual partnership basis. So if we go into this screen here, and we've got a distribution here um, from non-primary production. And if we move across, um, this values from these two values here, now it needs to total up and distribute it between these three items. So if these items here, one, two, three shared items do not equal the value of these two, you will throw that particular error. Um, so once these values all add up, you'll get a clear validation screen, which I'll show from here, and it'll come through to here with no validation errors. But if we go back, I'll just change that quickly. It's running slowly. So we've got no validations there. So if we go back into the income, to the partnership, to the trusts, after a partnership, and we change one of these values in here to say 20,000 or we just put a zero in which is what a lot of people are got at the moment we'll have a zero in there then we try to go back into the validation so you'll expect to see this error which is the one we're talking about. So once again, if we go back into here and share that value from these two items over these three and put it in the appropriate box. Should all flow through correctly from there. And once again, the validation should be clear. Okay, so we move on to the next item. And the next item is for the STP final declarations. Um, so basically what is happening here is 
we have um, employers who are required to make a declaration to the ATO that they provided all of the information for an employee for a financial year. So this is per employee base. Um, so the declaration allows the ATO to make final the uh, information available to the employee's income um, and to the pre-fills for the tax agents. So once that's been finalised, that can then be um, made available for the employees to um, be able to do the pre-fill information to the tax agents. Um, now, the final indicator can be made uh, at any time during the financial year as part of a regular pay event, um, and it can also be done through an update event. Um, if you've got a, um, at the end of the financial year, this can only be done through an update. It cannot be done through the regular form, um, and this is found on the employee's worksheet. Uh, if you look at a quick copy there, we've got a... STP for the current period, and as you can see, um, highlighted here, there's a question there as to if this is a final pay run for the employee. Um, so that can be a yes or no option, and that's done once, and once that's finalised, um, that makes the information available um, at the ATO end for the uh, employee to be uploaded as a pre-fill. Um, we go also the other way of doing that, as I said before, is through an update event. I will show you quickly uh, where this is done in a bit. Um, the S, the updates allows you to make changes to a previously recorded um, STP. It's kind of like a, an amendment in a way, um, what we would normally think of as an amendment. Um, and it, can be, it can't be used to supply um, so it cannot be used to supply employees total amounts or total um, PAYG W amounts and employees overboarding details. Uh, in practice management, an update can only be created for the most recently lodged form. Um, so be aware of that. It's um, a lodged form only. You can only update on a lodged form. Um, and, and it ensures that the uh, rollover details are correct. So if we have a look at how to create one of these, um, you can navigate to the job screen um, under business jobs and from there you can highlight the return that you want to update and just pre pressing update. So if I can quickly go to that for you and to screen, so I've got one here and if you can See, I've got a previously lodged return, so it shows the responded amount there. And all we need to do is click on the update button. And that will create an updated form, as you can see there, separate form. And this is now an updated form. So you can then go and make changes on an employee. Next screen here, this is where we were talking about where it's finalised, so we could change that finalised if we wanted. And put in an update date in there. Uh, oops, didn't have to do that. Okay, and then we can go and fill out the final details and lodge that. Um, so we can make the declaration. and set a period date, but once that's done, it's, it's ready to go, and you can then go and lodge that as you would normally. Okay, so if we go back um, to I'll the... start a further note to that, Digby, if I can. Yeah, sure. Um, the, the guidance from the ATO there is where, uh, when you're marking an employee as, uh, or their pay run as a, as a final event for the financial year, if later during the same financial year there is a further payment, um, there is a bit of a different treatment, if it's going to be a one-off payment, um, the advice there is you would mark that one as a final event as well. If you've started making payments again and it, you, you expect that that's going to continue on for, for further reports, um, then it is to not mark them anymore as final until you've, until you've made that last one again. Um, so you, you can continue to pay a, an employee after you've marked it final initially. Um, it's just how you treat that afterwards. Excellent. 
Okay. So now the, let's show the update there. Um, now the next item is for uh, rental schedules. Um, there's been another significant change made there where uh, previously um, it was splitting the uh, thing, splitting um, the shared amounts. Um, nowadays, um, because of some changes to the ATO end, we can also make an override to that. Um, this might be particularly pertinent to if you've got uh, interest and in loans or travel expenses that may differ between um, a shared property, and they can be um, overwritten um, rather than just evenly split. So we can have a quick look at that uh, in a tax return. Um, we've got an individual return here. There is a part of the rental um, item for a rental property. You've got an override here. Um, so that um, ticking on that will allow you to be able to manually make changes to the shared of the tax for each taxpayer, um, whereas previously that wasn't an option. Um, so we'll just have a quick look at that. If we go into a individual return, actually I have one there already, don't we? Okay, so go into income and into a rental property. Look at number one test street. So we have in this case a 50% split, and we can click on this to override, which will allow you to change, make changes into there. So as we were describing before, we can make changes in here as well. So if we want to change the amount of interest on a loan, we've got individual differences there. We might need to make changes there. And that will, sorry, oops. Oh, wait, I meant to make changes on this end, sorry. So we might make a change to 400 here, 4,000, et cetera. Um, so we can make changes on this side rather than um, allowing the override. But if we take this off, it will go back to the original values of split 50-50. So if you go and click that box, it'll allow you to make changes, and you can go back and write the values on this side here. So we can get a thousand, and that will make it for each individual layer. Okay, um, so we'll go back to the Slides. Um, now, um, due to changes to the ATO requirements for 2020, some questions were previously in what we call a grid, um, you might call a table, uh, have been converted to um, worksheets entry. Um, so an example of this would be um, interest and dividends and employee share schemes. Um, they were collecting a lot more information and it just made sense for us to put it in a changed um, worksheet style rather than to use continue to use a grid which would becoming would become unwieldy and it's not a usable format to do as a grid format anymore um, so we've done it as a worksheet whereas previously we'd be using a, a grid or a table format um, so the extra information is required it's just so much more information than previously, so it just didn't make sense to continue with the former grid format. Okay, um, now Steve, you're going to take it from here, I believe. Yep, um, sorry, I'm just looking through some of the questions coming through. Um, I will address some of those, otherwise, um, as I mentioned earlier, support will be taking some of those and, and replying via email, um, but I'll, I'll return to those in a second. Um, just a reminder with our uh, when we do a release, um, each one of those releases is accompanied by the, the normal release email, which also has a link to the release notes. Um, sometimes those release notes do contain information on particular changes, uh, and especially if there's any steps required by users. So it's, it is always a, a good idea to, to read those. I do know some clients are not receiving emails from us, uh, whether it's due to changed addresses over time or a change in our email system. So if you're not receiving those and you'd like to, please drop a line to support and we'll get you added to that list. Um, and before I hand over to Michael to discuss the Reckon community, um, what I'll get you to do, um, Digby, one of, the, one of the questions was about where the immediate asset write-off uh, is located. So if you can go back to 
your individual tax return that you have up. Yep. Okay. All right. So what was the um, so, you again? Uh, question 15? Sorry, you broke up there, sorry. Uh, question 15, sorry. 15, yep. Yep. Uh, if you just create a new worksheet there. Yep, so if you go next. Um, and then the depreciation expenses worksheet that's there. Depreciation Yep, now the second lot of boxes there, you've got the SBA deduction for low cost assets, mm -hmm. uh, where if you're using the SBA, SBA provisions for depreciation, you'll go into that worksheet and you'll enter the, the assets there up to the, the new $150,000 limit. Uh, there is no restrictions on this grid on, on how much you can enter here to allow for um, basically a bulk entry of, of like items where that limit might go over the 150. You will get a warning if you go over it, but um, we don't actually restrict that. Um, so that's that's where that's found. Um, question about some STP lodgements and the uh, issues basically getting a response from the ATO. STP uses a different lodgement method than other returns. Um, so rather than getting an instant response, like you would with an individual tax return, for instance, um, it goes through a different process where you receive a, basically a notification first, so the ATO has received it, and they will prepare a response. Depending, and, and it is very much depending on what day of the week it is really, because of STP and, and the large volume of transactions that go through Australia-wide, um, it, can, it can take, 30 seconds for the ATO to generate a response, it can take several hours. Um, and it really depends on the volume of lodgements that are going through at the, at the time to the ATO. Uh, there have been issues in the past where the ATO have, well, their STP system has sort of broken down for, for want of a better word um, during the day and responses will never be generated for those particular reports, even though they have received them, they'll have processed them and, and they'll appear on the portal for you to look at their system will not have generated a response um, and will therefore will require a manual entry um, into to practice management for that. Um, so it's a little bit of a difference between that and, and your tax return lodgements. Um, the Ledger update. Uh, so Ledger was actually released to hosted environment first for, for our hosted users. Um, which would have been last, not this weekend, just gone the weekend before. Um, desktop users would have received it on, on the week, uh, on Friday. Um, it does require a couple of steps there to correct the, the data um, on rollover. No data has been lost in, in that issue. Um, it just requires a, a rebuild of the, the temporary to total tables that we generate when printing reports. Um, so the instructions are in the release notes on, on those two releases. Um, Question about simpler BAS. So the current uh, the current activity statement forms support simpler BAS. Um, there's just a, a question in there um, on how to do that. When you when you end on the GST section, um, I think it's option. There's three options at the top basically, um, and one of those is the simple BAS. There is a change coming to the activity statements. It, it should have been here in December, but the ATO have postponed that, um, and it should probably cater towards making the simpler BAS option much cleaner. Um, so I'll, I'll leave some of the other questions for now for support to, to take through. Um, some of them are validation rules and, and other things that will require a bit, um, bit more information. Um, so Michael, if you're here, I'll, I'll hand over to you to discuss the, the Reckon community. I am. Um, I'm not able to share my screen. I think you may have to make me the presenter. Sure, give me one moment. There we go. Uh, 
uh, now, are you seeing the Rickon page? Or are you yes. seeing my other screen? Yes, you are. Okay, great. Uh, yes, thanks, uh, thanks, uh, Steve, for uh, passing this on to me. Um, you will all no doubt be aware that uh, there have been some support issues um, with the Elite product over the last uh, few months, um, and we uh, we are making progress, but uh, we still have a little bit of way to, to go. Um, what we what we have worked out though is that. Um, uh, there wasn't really a place for uh, for you, the the elite users, to talk to each other when you have uh, a problem. Um, so uh, we what we've uh, what we've done is we've set up a community forum for the Reckon Elite uh, product. Uh, it's part of the the uh, Reckon uh, community forum page, uh, which is what you're looking at at the moment. This is the home page for the Reckon community forums. Uh, you see the URL is up here at the top there. If you want to take note of that, uh, within within this this is the community forum for all of the Reckon products, including Reckon Elite, which I'll show you in a moment. Um, just to show you what we have at the front here, the the forums are, are run by a very nice gentleman called Rav. There's his photo there. Um, he uh, he moderates each of the forums and then passes. Uh, any uh, requests over to the relevant uh, department where he thinks it's appropriate. But this is uh, this forum is not intended as a substitute for support, rather a supplement to uh, a supplemental resource that you can use uh, 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 instead of contacting support or on top of contacting support. Um, I'll show you how you can do that in a moment. Um, just to go through the home page here briefly, uh, the featured conversations there you'll notice there on all there's various products. They're, they're the most recent um, conversations that have happened in in any rooms that are in, on the community. Um, more conversations down the bottom there. On the right hand side, uh, little green box there, for announcement regarding Reckon Single Touch Payroll app. Uh, you will sometimes from time to time see announcements there in that form. A uh, section on the community notice board. Uh, it's moderated from Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. AEST. Um, <clears throat> they've got a link there to find a record and updates. Uh, those are the most recent updates that are being released uh, for the record products. And then there's a, a link to the community guidelines. Next, we get down here to the categories. And this is this is where you navigate across to the Reckon Elite forum. If you just click the view all link here, uh, it takes you to the, the um, categories page uh, and you'll see the forums for each of the products that Reckon provides. Um, and down the bottom of the page here, there's the Reckon Elite forum. So you'll see the most three most recent articles um, in the front page here. Uh, and you just click view all conversations to go into the elite forum. Uh, now, the the forum itself, the Reckon Elite forum, consists of a number of uh, parts. Um, if you had a look across the bar here, uh, you have the option to filter down on any of these categories. Uh, questions are generally questions posted by your fellow forum users. Uh, if you know the answer, you are welcome to post in their thread and uh, give them, uh, share your knowledge with them uh, to assist them. Uh, ideas are um, for putting ideas or suggestions for enhancement requests and things like that. Uh, problems, uh, again, um, another place for you to categorise your um, your posts uh, when when you create a post in the forum. Uh, you're actually asked for a category. So these ones have been all been categorised problems. Uh, praise, we hope to see that one filled up uh, over time as uh, the support position improves. Uh, articles, that's that's a, a very useful subsection. Uh, from time to time, we will we'll be building up the articles page with useful information. At the moment, there's I think the top 10 um, knowledge articles that we have in our knowledge base. Uh, posted also in the community forum. So very common, commonly um, 
recurring questions that we get in support, uh, we will put uh, those up here when we feel it's appropriate. And the final category is announcements. Uh, now, you know, this is not, there's not a lot of um, content there at the moment. This forum only went live a couple of weeks ago. Um, some of you may be familiar with the old uh, forums that were there. Uh, they were actually APS, Reckon APS forums that um, the elite users found uh, by accident. So some people have been using the APS forums to post uh, Reckon elite uh, questions and so on. But we've now uh, moved across into a dedicated Reckon elite um, forum. Uh, before you can access the forum, you do have to register. Uh, I can't show that page because I am already registered uh, under my name. Um, and, um, <clears throat> excuse me, um, as you, for those that uh, uh, like this feature, uh, you can gamify your posts. So the more posts you get, the more points you score on the forum. So you can set yourself a little goal, help out your fellow uh, Reckon Elite users and uh, score points as you go. Uh, the first time you go to the Reckon Elite Forum, uh, oh, where am I here? Sorry, I'll go back to this page. As I said, you will be prompted to uh, register. Uh, once you've registered, um, <clears throat> excuse me, you do get the, that's that's the URL for the dedicated Reckon Elite Forum. So once you've registered, you can jump straight to that. URL without having to go through the other pages first, if that's what you prefer. Uh, the um, yeah, the uh, the as I said before, uh, the intention is that uh, we use this forum not to replace support, uh, just as a supplement support. You may find if you post a question in the forum, uh, one of your fellow Reckon Elite users may know the answer and you may get your answer quicker than you do from uh, logging a support call with Reckon Elite support. Um, or you can do both, you know, log your support call, put your question in the forum as well and uh, you know, maximise the possibility that you'll get the answer as soon as uh, possible. Uh, okay, so just to supplement that, um, we're also in the process of building up the Reckon Elite knowledge base. Um, now, it is a bit uh, complicated, uh, but the actual the Reckon Elite knowledge base actually sits, up, sits under the My APS portal, although it's not an APS product. Uh, within the APS portal, we have articles. You see the top one there, Elite, how to set up the M2M credentials. All of the Reckon Elite articles uh, do have that Elite um, prefix on them to differentiate them from APS knowledge articles, which don't, as those two you can see below have. Um, <clears throat> so you don't need a login to use the, um, the My APS portal. Uh, you just go to this, this um, URL, which is myaps.reckon.com, and to find what you're looking for, you just type in your search term. So I'm going to look for, say, um, release notes 2020, so I type release plus notes. If you're familiar with the way Google works, you put a plus sign to include a word, you put a minus sign to exclude a word. So I'll just put that and also elite, to filter down on elite. And that should give me a list of all the Reckon Elite release notes that have been released uh, in 2020. And uh, then obviously it's just a matter of clicking on the relevant uh, link to um, to get to the article you're looking for. Um, very, the, as I said, uh, I will admit that the, the, the elite knowledge base at the moment isn't huge, uh, but we are uh, we have a project underway to build it up um, to make uh, make your life a bit easier. Uh, and uh, yeah, watch this space. Uh, but as I said, very easy URL to remember myaps.reckon.com to, to go to the knowledge base. And if you go back to the community forum uh, and go to the articles page, you should find a link there to the, um, uh, oh, the release notes and known issues. Um, yeah, I thought there was one there, but I could be mistaken. We'll put one there. 
to get from the from the for, from the forum to the knowledge base. Uh, that's all I have to cover off. I think uh, I'll pass back over to Steve. Thanks, Michael. Um, just while you were giving that update, I have put a copy of the slideshow from today, uh, along with the links to the uh, the Reckon community, um, the knowledge bases, and the help files on there as well. So you should be able to all download that from the handout section. Um, we'll also be emailing that out to to the users after after this webinar today. Um, Diggy, if I can just get you to present your screen again. Um, with practice management. I've just got a couple more questions that I'll, I'll run through. Um, again, I won't run through any of the validation errors because I'll require some more detailed answers, but um, one of the questions come up a few times, the, the new SBR replacement for the pre-fill um, and when that's going to come out. Um, we will have a small update to the individual tax return this week. Um, the next update after that, we'll start to introduce that SBR pre-fill. Um, beginning with the selling wages items, interest dividends, um, employer share schemes, and managed fund um, items. And then we'll introduce the other items uh, in subsequent updates from there on. Um, as we start to introduce those changes, we'll also be turning off those particular items from the old portal prefill. Um, so if you, you, you will be able to do both while they overlap, um, but certain items will no longer import from the old one as they've been updated. Um, and then just quickly, the, um, there, was, there was a question on how to add a manual lodgement date um, from the discussion on the STP. So if, if you can go into a, into a client's job management screen. Yep. Um, just close that. And get into... Yeah, so okay. basically from, from a client's, um, what, once you've selected the client, if you go into their job management screen, um, you've got the options there for either tax jobs, business jobs, um, or other ATO forms. Depending on what you're trying to mark as manual lodge, so in this case an STP, it'll be under the business jobs. Um, normally this, uh, the section that DB's got there, the lodgement status is completed automatically once you lodge a return. Um, if for whatever reason there is no response received and you just need to clear off that return, you can put the date in there. Um, once you've put a manual date in there, you'll see that instead of saving the log file as it normally would and the name of the person who lodged it, it'll just say manual entry. Um, most, when you lodge a return through the normal method, um, you won't be able to delete the date lodged without a password from support. If it's a manual entry date such as this, you'll be able to just delete it. Um, you will get a, a warning saying that you shouldn't based off um, the ATO's guidance, but uh, you will have the option to um, to continue that. You have to select no on that uh, message, did we? Oh, no. <laughs> 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 okay. Um, client update forms for 2020. Um, the client update is a year-based form, so uh, it historically has always been closed off, I think about the 7th of July of every year by the ATO. Um, since moving to SBR, it has become a version-based form. So there is, uh, we, we've continued to release it yearly, um, but that will change in the future. Um, so it's just a single client update form. Um, you may need to, as it is a year-based form currently, you may need to just go and download that from the website if it's not appearing for you, um, either through the check for updates in PM or directly from the um, uh, to the website to download that. Um, and just another quick question, do you have the activity statements um, present by any chance? Two seconds. Yep. And sorry, I should say for the main content, um, that's we've basically covered everything that uh, we had planned for today. Um, so like I said, we will email all these notes out, plus make a video, uh, recording the video available to users um, at some point later today. Um, so while I've got a little bit of time, I'll just run through some of the questions that, is, that, are, that are coming through at the moment. Um, so if you can go to JC, Digby.
Um, so up the top here, you'll have the option for simpler bus. Um, now, you if if a particular taxpayer is not eligible to use simpler bus by the ATO um, and you try to use it, um, it will get rejected for a, for a particular error to say that they must complete certain labels. Um, otherwise, only the uh, for simpler bus only allows labels G1 um, and some down the bottom. Do you think scroll down a little bit? Uh, and 1A and 1B. So all the other G labels are, are, are disabled when simple bus is selected, um, as well as the GC calculation worksheet, um, which is not uh, or can't be sent when simple bus is selected. Um, okay, do we can close that one? Um, somebody has asked just where to find the business jobs. So if you can just go to your job management icon there. So it's the one on the left that looks like a series of four binders with a with a red binder. Once you've selected your client in the, in the main practice management screen, if you click that icon. So, yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, so from here. Yeah, I was just, just going to show you, yeah. yep. select the client. Yep. Okay, so you've got that message, right? Test numbers. So you'll either have the tabs down the bottom there, where Digby is highlighting now, with the last one being business jobs, or if you click that icon down the left, Digby, uh, under the main navigator, you'll have the the third one down under home. Next one up. Yep. So that's your job management navigator, and it's the bottom one in that list as well. Um, there is a question there around the blocking of TFN when um, when printing and, and removing the payment details. So this was actually a change that was made uh, several years ago um, after a huge number of client requests to do so. Um, recently, we've had a lot more client requests to no longer do that. So. Uh, it is on the list of things that will we'll change and revert back to having a separate option to hide the TFN or hiding the um, the, the payment details from that rather than having it uh, combined. Uh, there was no requirement to do that to begin with or, or any particular reason other than uh, it was requested by a, a large amount of clients at the time. Um, what else have I got that I can answer briefly? Uh, the STP and the roll forward amounts. Um, so when, when an STP report is sent to the ATO, it um, it involves two sets of numbers basically. One is the current year to date amount of the, the, the payment to the employee. So not th this period's payment isn't actually sent, that, that data is not sent, it is always the year to date amounts. Um, that's used in conjunction with the employer's total PAYGW amounts and total gross income, um, uh, total gross payments as well. Um, so essentially when, when you do roll over an STP form from one period to the next, uh, we will carry through whatever the final, the, the total year to date figure was from one report and that will then become the opening year to date figure. If, if a particular employee hasn't received a payment for that period or, or anything, the current year to date amount is still what is then um, reported to the ATO. So that, that year to date, even if it hasn't changed in a particular period, constantly gets reported to the ATO until that um, until that employee is marked as being final for the for the year. Um, and, and that's also the reason why uh, you can't create an update or a replacement of, a, of an older lodged um, report because those ones 
uh, in the sequence of, of lodgements, they still must contain the, the current year-to-date amount. So to ensure that that's rolled over correctly, um, they can only be created from the most recently lodged STP report for that taxpayer. Um, dividends printing issue on the self-managed super fund, that'll be in this week's release, um, which should be early this week. Um, that, that actually will affect most forms. There was a change in the individual return there uh, with that extra data being a shared component. So um, that there will be a, re uh, a release for all the tax forms to, to correct that printing. Um, okay, I think most of the other questions that I can see will require a little bit more detailed answers. So like I said, we'll go through that list um, and we'll get in contact with each one of you um, with, with an answer to those uh, to those questions. Uh, that pretty much wraps up today's webinar. Um, I hope you had some use out of that. And um, we are planning for a, a follow-up uh, in a couple of weeks. So you'll receive an email for, for those details. Thank you all for attending. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Bye.